Welcome back to the Nourished Podcast. Join along as we explore the final week of our summer series, reviewing the book and the Bible study, What Is It Like to Be Married to Me by Linda Dillo. The final chapter titled The Woman in the Mirror is what we're exploring today. Linda opens up this final week of the study, challenging each of us to look into the mirror and complete the mirror test, which was inspired by NFL coach John McKay. Quoting McKay here, all that matters at the end of the day is can you look in the mirror and honestly tell the person that you see in your reflection that you've done your best. Now, Linda reframes this quote to align specifically to our marriages like this. All that matters is if you can look in the mirror and honestly tell yourself that you have been a faithful wife. Can we honestly say to our reflection that we have taken our responsibility and our assignment as a wife seriously? Now, did any of you take a moment this week to review your marriage statement from week two? Did it hold true as to what you had originally written? Or did you find yourself making some changes and adjustments after you walked through this full study? And did you decide to share it with your husband? I would love to know how this practice specifically or this study holistically has impacted your marriage or you as a wife. Please, please reach out to me and share. I would love to hear from you. And you can find all of my contact information in the show notes. I love the stories this week of old love. I pray that each of us has the opportunity to walk through experiencing old love. But we certainly are not promised that. Our marriages begin with us pledging for better or for worse, for richer, for poorer, for sickness and in health. And when we're young and beautiful and we feel invincible, we naturally focus on the better, richer and health. But each of us as a couple will enter seasons of worse, poor and sickness. It is so important that we have the infrastructure in place within our marriages to endure those storms of life when they come. Hold tightly to this passage in scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, 7. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Now, the story of Renee and David was devastating, but it was also very beautiful. I pray that reading about the abruptness of David's passing and the brevity of his life helps each of us to slow down and assess our priorities. None of us gets to know the number of our days. It is one of the many divine mysteries that we are just not privy to that information. We can, however, choose to live every day, leaving it all on the table. Let's not make our loved ones wonder how we feel about them. Let's not assume that they know. Let's show them, tell them, live out our love as loudly as we can, because someday it will all come to an end. Linda shares a great list of reminders of the things that we will and will not regret at the end of our time on earth. Now, of course, this is a short list of things that really kind of apply to this study itself. The list is innumerable and will be different for every person that can hear my voice. But beginning on page 207, she gives us a great start to these lists. You will not regret a single dreamy walk that you took together. You will not Regret the time that you stayed up so late talking and holding each other that you were zombies at work the next day. You will not regret all the times that you made love and let the housework go. You will not regret writing your marriage statement and sharing it with your husband. And you will not regret telling your husband why you respect him. We will, however, have many regrets along the way, right? We will regret the hundreds of hours that we spent fighting. We will regret the time that we held the grudge or that we gave the silent treatment. We'll regret griping, inventing, and complaining. We will regret saying, maybe next year sex will be better. And we will regret not really believing that our time as lovers was limited. Now, we have come such a long way over these last several weeks together walking through this study, and I hope that you found moments that made you laugh. Maybe they made you cry. And I pray that you've grown personally and spiritually through this experience. As I've mentioned, I walked through this study and completed these same exercises several years ago. And walking back through them again has been such a gift. It has really been a blessing to see how far our marriage has come in these last several years of our life, but also to reflect and take stock and appreciate that I still have a long way to go to be the wife that God has designed for me to be. 
And I am not sure what your current day-to-day life looks like, but we have several changes on the horizon in our life that will impact my marriage. And it's really well-timed reminders as I walk through this study to help me prioritize and recalibrate as we go into this next season on our beautiful marriage journey. And I hope that it's resonating with you as well in whatever seasons that you're walking through in your own marriage. Thank you so much for experiencing this study with me. It's really my great hope that you're able to take away a few nuggets here or there that blessed you. And my friends, we did it. We have reached the end of this beautiful study together. I'm so very thankful for those of you that chose to walk through this with me. I know firsthand that some of this was really hard, but we did it. Congratulations. I really hope this experience enriched your marriage and that you found it to be time well spent. I will leave you with one of the quotes from this week's reading from William Coleman. Love never fails. Money, youth, and motorboats all fail. Waistlines stretch, teeth vanish, eyes weaken, our skin wrinkles, heads bald, arches drop. But love and love alone never gives up. Until we meet again, my sweet friends, I pray that each of you is choosing to boldly do what you can with what you have from where you are to ensure that your marriage is fully nourished. And that's a wrap. I look forward to connecting with all of you next week. Take care.